They play Georgia Tech at Georgia Tech. <laughs>
the love for him too. Hey, welcome home. Welcome to the 9 a.m. service at Christ Point Church. Welcome to the to the 9 a.m. service. And I want to say there's a, a lot of things going on this morning. Now, I want to, to make notice before anything happens, before we move on to anything else, I'm going to have to tell you, I can't I can't talk to you guys anymore. I can't I can't because my mama's Miss Senior White County and I'm not. So if I don't speak to you guys anymore, it's because I'm not allowed to roll to get to the button. So that's just how it goes. So uh, my, my mama, she'll be, she'll be uh, taking that, yes, she'll be signing autographs. She'll be filling that role for the, for the upcoming year. And if you need anything like loans or endorsements or, or anything, you just see her. She'll take care of you. I want to say this morning, it's good to have you with us in service this morning. It's good to be at Christ Point Church. What a wonderful weather we're having today. And I want to say that I, I want us to to uh, talk just a little bit about uh, prayer and a little bit about offering because today we are going to we're going to open our offerings uh, uh, over the next few weeks, including today, uh, for Compassion Point. And uh, what that will be is basically uh, we're going to we're going to give what money comes in to uh, storm victims. They are all the way from Nashville. All the way from That by you can do that by giving a check. Now you know that won't be your tithe, but it'll be your offering. Uh, you can give that. You can do that by giving a check. You can plan next week. You can go to the website and give. You can go through the app. There is a link on the app, like Johnny had already mentioned. There's a link on the app. If you don't have the app, you just look for that that cross and that background. It says Christ Point Church of Tennessee. And you can make your donations there. So I want you to know that it is, uh, uh, and in, in light of all of that, there's a lot of suffering. I saw on the television about an hour ago, an entire family didn't didn't make it through uh, the, the floods in, in Houston, and, and I'm assuming they found the grandparents and all the great grandchildren, uh, uh, and they've been passed for some time, I guess, in, in a van in, in, in Houston. So there's a lot of people hurting. There's a lot of people displaced. A lot of people in need. There are people that are starving right now for a drink of water. So uh, uh, anything that we do is, is wonderful. But our president has, has issued a day of prayer today. And I want to start off by doing that. And then we'll pray for our offering. I want us to pray together for Houston, for the Texas community, for the Louisiana, the Mississippi. Uh, we, we have people in, in Nashville and, and, and points west in Tennessee that were very, very, very affected by tremendous flooding. So let us pray together and let's take that opportunity to pray in like mind with other churches and other organizations and other Christian people across this nation this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that, that nothing catches you off guard and you're not, you're not uh, surprised by anything. And Lord, we know that this is an opportunity to show compassion. This is an opportunity to show Your goodness, Lord. This is an opportunity to reach out. This is an opportunity to witness, Lord. Uh, Lord, if $3 comes in or if $30,000 comes in, Lord, let it be blessed and let it change lives. Let it be anointed. Lord, we are going to pray this morning in unison with our fellow churches across the country. And we're going to lift up the, the Houston community. Lord, uh, the, the storm stayed a long, long time. Sometimes our storms in our lives seem like they stay a long time. But Lord, we know that they will pass. And it has passed. Uh, rivers and streams and lakes are and water uh, levels are receding. And Lord, folks, there is a huge, huge rebuilding process that, that, will take, that will be undertaken, Lord. And we pray that that You will minister through each and every situation to each and every life, Lord. We ask You to bless, bless these folks 
and let us be focused on praying and seeking you for them this morning, Lord, and this day, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. I, want, I would like for you to put uh, to pray with me for our tithe and offering. If you uh, are new with us this morning, if you're visiting, we pray this prayer. We put it on the board. It's not a prosperity prayer. It's not a name it and claim it. It is our prayer that we pray audibly together in unison because I believe that, that the Lord is empowers the prayers of His people, especially when we pray together. And if you're affected by this prayer, raise your hand let me know. Testimony, that's a powerful testimony. Let's pray it out loud. As we receive this morning's tithes and offerings, we are believing you, our Lord, for provision and protection, jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements and contracts, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, money found and debts paid off, expenses decreased and blessings increased. And thank you, Lord, for meeting all of my financial needs so that I may have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we said together, Amen. 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 Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you for the opportunity to worship together. This is an this is an area that we can all worship together in. And uh, not everybody can well everybody can sing, but not everybody can sing beautifully. Uh, everybody can worship. Everybody can everybody everyone in here can enter into a place of worship. Everyone in here can worship the Lord and give it. So it's wonderful. It's wonderful. And I want to say. Uh, uh, Friday night, it was dreary outside. It was wintry almost. That's the extent of my winter. I don't want any more. I'm finished. Yeah, I'm, finished. I'm agreeing with the green bay guy. I'm, I, I don't want any more winter, so I'm finished. That was the extent of the winter that we had. And uh, we, we still had a lot of people that came out for the women's study and the men's study and uh, and uh, uh, we have a, also have a, a, a put pinpoint study on, on Monday mornings. Tom does a wonderful job with that. It's at lunch. You bring your lunch and sit in. Uh, uh, Jamie and Johnny do a wonderful job with with the Sigma study and the authentic man. And I'm excited about where God has taken us and, and the opportunities in, in front of us. It's good to have you guys with us. Stand with us. Let's worship the Lord just a little bit more. Welcome to the 9 a.m. service at Christ Point Church.
affected so just pray for them throughout the day and because you know that's a that's a prayer in unison all day long so thank the lord for that uh, the way of the eye now i want to i want to preach this morning kind of talk to you a little bit the way of the eye now it's not the eye now let me back up just a minute i forgot something if you're listening to us by radio this morning uh if if you're tuning in uh uh, by radio, then we want to say welcome home. We are Christ Point Church. We're located on the square in Sparta, Tennessee. If you come on into Sparta, go to the square, you'll find us. Our service times are at 9 and they are at 11 a.m. And uh, Wednesday night fuel begins at 6. We will feed you at 6. And then also we will uh, we will have service uh, elective classes on Wednesday nights at uh, at uh, 6 30. so it's good to have you with us it's good to, for you to be tuning in with us if you're watching us by youtube or one of our links or ben loman uh tv then we want to say welcome home it's good to have you guys with us this morning the way of the eye now that's not the eye that we see with but it is the letter i the way of the eye that's the title of the sermon this morning the way of the eye and see let me tell you something the eye can cause us to act the eye can cause us to do. The eye can cause us to react in ways that are detrimental. Right. Detrimental to our well-being. Detrimental to our reputation. Detrimental to our direction in life. Detrimental to our relationships. Now I'm going somewhere. I'm not just talking about the alphabet this morning. 
the, the eye can cause us to act and to do and to react in ways that are detrimental ultimately to our lives. So we're going to look this morning at two eyes. We're going to look at the, this morning at two eyes. I mean, we're kind of going back to first grade here. We're going to look at the big eye and the little eye. So we're going to look at the big eye and we're going to look at the little eye. So first of all, I want to introduce you to the little eye. The little eye in our lives is the injection. The little eye is the injection. I mean an injection. The little eye is the injection. See, let me ask you something. And let me challenge you this morning. And you're thinking, what are we injecting into our lives? So what are we injecting into our lives? Because whatever we inject into ourselves becomes part of us. Now, if you have a need for insulin, many people in this country do, many people in our church do. If you have a need for insulin, then you will make an injection of insulin on a, on a, a regular basis, and then that insulin becomes a part of you. So you are injecting something that becomes part of you. It helps you. If you are, if you are uh, uh, under the weather and you have a need for antibiotics, then you will make an injection, or someone will make an injection of antibiotics. It becomes a part of of our system. It becomes a part of who we are. It becomes a part of us. Drug addicts, when, 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 they, when they are partaking uh, in, in, in injections, the drug becomes a part of them. So, I want to look at the injection. I want to look at the little eyes. I want to look at the injection. I want to go way back about 3,000 years. Let's go back about 3,000 years-ish. And let's go back to the great King Saul of Israel. Let's go back and look at this guy. Now, a lot, of, a lot of things that we can learn from good old King Saul. A lot of things. We, we need to look and see what he was injecting into his life. Now, now, let me just kind of get you on board in case you don't know. The people of Israel, you know, they, they, were, they, they, were, they were crying out to the Lord. You know, we want a king like other nations. See, let me tell you something. When we start crying out that we want something like other people, then sometimes we don't know what we're asking for. I want something like they have. I want something, I want to be like they are. I want to do like they do. We want a king like other nations. We want a king. So God said, I'm going to give you what you're asking for. If that's what you want, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give you what you're asking for. King Saul was the first king anointed, uh, appointed uh, by the Lord through the prophet Samuel, to become king of Israel. So he's the, he's the new king of Israel. They got what they wanted. See, let's take a look and see what he's injecting into his life. If we look into it, we're, we're going to put this scripture on the board, but, uh, but you can read it. If you look into 1 Samuel chapter 10, we're going to stay in 1 Samuel this morning, but if you look at first, uh, chapter 10, Saul has been given, he's, 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 he's relatively in the infancies of his, of his kingship, of his authority, and he has been given a task by the Lord. This is what I want you to do. I want you to get ready for battle. I want you to wait upon the man of God. I want you to wait upon Samuel. I want, I want you to wait seven days, and Samuel will come and, get, and, and, have, and, and make sacrifice before the Lord. Samuel will do this. So the, word, the Lord speaks to Samuel. Now, if you wonder what's going on there with Samuel and with Saul, Saul is the king, the king of the people. Samuel is the hearer of God. He's the, he's the judge, so to speak. He is, the, he is the, the one that speaks directly from the Lord. So if you want to say the king has a trump, then that's the trump. That's the guy that, 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 that can rebuke the king, correct the king. That's the guy that nobody messes with. So he's the one hearing from the Lord. He's the one that better be walking the walk and talking the talk. So he comes to him and he says, I want you to get ready for battle. Line up. Now, now the Philistines going into battle against the Philistines. Big, big army coming against them. They're mobilized and they're, they're, they're looking pretty strong. Saul has been given instructions to wait upon the Lord. Direct instructions. Before going to war, I want you to wait. Don't move until I tell you to. See, we got to realize that this our life is in existence based upon what God tells us to do, not what we decide is best for us. So we're going to look at the injections that Saul makes. So basically, the very first injection, we're going to look at 1 Samuel 13, verses 8, 9, 10, and 11. The very first injection that Saul makes is pride. He injects himself with pride. It's just like basically, I'm going to just 
take a syringe and I'm going to pull out a little bit of pride and I'm going to inject it in my arm. Now, it's a good time for an injection. He's injected himself with pride. Let's look at what the Word says. And he waited seven days. Remember, in verse 10, he tells him to wait seven days. And he did that. He waited seven days. The time pointed by Samuel. But Samuel did not come to Gilgal and the people were scattering from him. So all of a sudden, we've got an insecure king. We've got a king who really... That, that, that lacks a, an ability to lead adequately. So Saul said, bring the burnt offering to me. It's not happening fast enough. Bring it to me. Bring the burnt offering. Bring the peace offering. And he offered the burnt offering. As soon as he had finished offering the burnt offering, behold, here comes Samuel. Here comes Samuel. Just as he is getting finished. And Saul went out to meet him and to greet him. And Samuel said, what have you done? What have you done? And this is what Saul said, when I saw the people were scattering from me and that you didn't come within the days appointed, I saw the, the Philistines mustering up their, 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 uh, their, their troops. I got a little freaked out here. So I went ahead and done it myself. I went around the corner and I injected myself with some pride and I took over. See, pride says, I don't need God. Pride says, I don't, need, I don't need instruction. Pride says, I don't need anybody telling me how to do it. Pride says, I don't. I, well, you, can, you can talk all you want to, but you are Charlie Brown's teacher to me. Womp, 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 womp. And I have no idea what you're saying. Blah, 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 blah. I'm not listening to you. Pride says, I've, I've phased you completely out. Pride says, I don't need this. I don't need this instruction. Pride says, I can do this by myself. I can do it by myself. I don't need any help. Pride says, I don't have time to wait upon the Lord. Think about that. I don't have time to wait upon the Lord, so I'm just going to do it myself. So he just takes it upon himself and takes charge. And he does what he is not qualified to do, what he is not instructed to do, and what he is not designed to do. He has been called to lead the people and as the king. Samuel is the one who is anointed by God to make sacrifices. So he has done this completely out of order. Now let's look at the next injection. Let's look at another injection that he makes into his life. He basically gets out of uh, uh, another vial and he shoots himself with greed. You know what? I'm going to I'm going to put a little greed inside here. You know I don't feel like I'm greedy enough. My pride hasn't kicked in really good enough yet. So God has given him clear instruction. Now we're going to look at another passage of Scripture. God has given him clear instruction to completely kill all the Amalekites. Now, I know you say, for those, for those in this society that says God was harsh and, and, and no loving God would... But let me tell you something. This is the way we need to approach sin in our lives. Don't leave anything. Don't leave any root. Don't leave anything. God says, wipe out from the face of the earth this evil generation of people. These evil people, the Amalekites... The Amalekites did not help your people when they were coming out of Egypt. So you know what? Take them and wipe them off the face of the earth from the very king to the very rodent that runs around in the streets. Everything that has a heartbeat, kill it. Everything they take pride in, kill it. Everything, do this. Don't hold anything back. He gives them clear instruction. Everything with a heartbeat, so to speak, and all their possessions. Let's look at chapter 15, verse 9. Stay in 1 Samuel. But Saul and the people spared Agag. This is the king. And the best of the sheep. And he spared, they spared the best of the oxen and the fatted calves and the lambs. And all that was good. They, they, they kept all that was good and would not utterly destroy them. But all that was despised and worthless, they devoted destruction. We don't want them old things. Who wants them old nags to get rid of them and kill them? We don't care anything about those old skinny cows. We don't care anything about those old weak and, 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 and anemic and sickly lambs. Kill all of those. But all those good ones, man, we want those. Keep those. See, that's not what God said to do. So He injected greed into His system. I want the best for me. I want it, I want to make it all look good for me. I preached this, uh, uh, jumped on this text several, several, several months back, and I I believe that the reason he kept the king was to was to to basically uh, uh, parade him as look what Saul has done. So this is my trophy. He in, he injected greed into himself, and he became greedy. 
But see, Saul continues on this injection path. He continues to inject himself as time goes on. Let's look at verses 7 and verse 8. Back up just a little bit. We'll look at 7 and 8. And he says, And the people of Israel said to Samuel, Do not cease to cry out to the Lord our God for us, that He may save us from the, land, from the hand of the Philistines. Verse 7 basically says that he disobeyed the Lord. He disobeyed the Lord. So he, he, he basically just takes some injection medicine and just injects, injects some disobedience into his life. Into his system. You know what? It's not good enough that, I'm, that I'm, I'm, I've injected pride. And it's not even good enough that I've injected greed. But I'm going to inject some disobedience just to make sure that my sandwich looks good and tastes good. So he injects a little bit of disobedience into there. And he, disobe uh, he disobeys a direct uh, order from the Lord. They said that basically, in verse 7, they, they kept everything that was good. They kept this. So disobe I disobeyed the Lord. God said to kill them, and I didn't. I kept them. So, Saul keeps on, and he continues in this lethal injection. He continues. I want you to look at verse 12 in chapter 15. I want you to look at verse 12. I want you to see what's happening here. And then Samuel, this is the, 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 the man of God, rose early to meet Saul in the morning. Now, if the man of God says he's going to meet you, meet him. If the one that's hearing from the Lord says, I'm going to meet you, then you, you make plans to be there with him. And, he, and somebody told Samuel, Saul came to Carmel, and behold, he set up a monument for himself and turned and passed on and went down to Gilgal. You know what? Samuel didn't even wait. I mean, Saul didn't even wait around for you, Samuel. Saul does not really hasn't concerned himself with what the Lord is saying. Saul hasn't given thought to what the Lord's instructions are. Saul just left. Man, Saul, Saul cut out of here. He left. But before he left, before he left, he glorified himself. He injected himself with self-glorification. Before he left, he made another injection and he set up a monument to himself. Look at what I have done. Look at what I did. He set up a monument to himself and he basically made a big old image of a look at me image. You know, here's a look at me image. This is what I did. Every time somebody sees this, they're going to say, this is what Saul said. Now, if you notice, if you read this, if, and if you read other scriptures in, 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 in the Old Testament, they will say, and that, and that uh, monument is there to this day, or those stones are there to this day, or, or, or this is done as a reminder. Nowhere was it said that to this day, Saul's image of himself or Saul's memorial to himself was there to this day. See, God's not ordaining that. So you know what? He injected himself with self glorification And you know what? He went on. I don't even have time to hear from the man of God. I'm cutting out of here. So, as we move on, we find out that he injects himself again. Now, this is what, this is what you'll notice happens with people. I want to I wanna tell you what happened to, to my, one of my granddaughters when, when, when she was little. Tina had some of these white powdered donuts. And, and man, she wanted those donuts real bad. And I gave her one, and she wanted another, I gave her another one. So I, you know, you kind of fold them over, fold them over, and take the tabs and turn them. I put it back in the in the pantry. I come back in there, and there's 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 the bag. It's not it's not put together right. She's about two. It's not put together right. There's white powder all over the floor. Because I told her, I said, honey, you don't need any more. These, it's, it's not good for you to eat this all the time. So you don't don't get any more. Just get two. You're too little. So I come back in there, and I see that there's white powder all over the floor. The bags. Open. It's not been shut at all. It's been stuffed back in there, and she's got white powder all over her mouth. I said, "Bri, have you have you been in the donuts?" No. I said, "Are you sure you haven't been in the donuts?" I haven't been in the donuts. I said, "You didn't get any more after you and I talked." No, I didn't get any more. <laughs> then what's this bleeding of the sheep that I hear? You know, what's this I see around your mouth, Toots? So what what have you got going on? You know. So you know it was funny. It was very comical. But the thing that we do is we divert attention. Yeah. Bri, did you get in that? No. No. No, I love you, Luna. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't get into that. I didn't do anything. The, see, see, what happens is Saul injects himself with a diversion. 
And let's look at that in, in verse 13. Let's look at how he injects himself with a diversion. And Samuel came to Saul. Now he's trying to find him. He's trying to locate him. And Saul said to him, Blessed be to you. Blessed be to you, to the Lord. Blessed, you're blessed. I have done what the Lord has commanded. He diverts right out of the gate. Oh, by the way, before you say something to me, I'm going to divert the attention of wrong to right. You know what? I've done what God told me to do. You know what? Maybe, maybe if I don't tell him, he won't know. You know, I'm going to just take it. I'm going to take this as a sign that Samuel don't know that I kept some stuff for myself. Samuel don't know this, so I'm going to meet him out in the in the street, so to speak, and tell him I'm going to divert the attention to my way of talking. So I'm going to I'm going to monopolize the conversation. Oh, hey Samuel, what's going on? Did did you notice that I did what the Lord told me to do? Maybe if I tell him I did it. Maybe if I tell him I, I follow the command of the Lord, he won't know any better. Let's try the cover-up. Let's try the, the diversionary tactic. Let's try to, 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 to divert the attention to something else. So he, he injects diversion. Because when you're resorted <coughs> to, to, to uh, injecting diversion, you've gotten a little deep at this point. You're trying to squirm around underneath the, the, the cover that you've made. But see, as we follow along, it gets worse. See, any time that you see this happening in people's lives, it gets worse. If you see someone that is dependent upon drugs, it gets worse. So he gets to the point to where not one injection is good enough. He starts to have to inject himself twice. As we look at uh, uh, verses 14 and 15, let's look at the double injection. And Samuel said, what then is this bleeding of the sheep that I hear and the lowing of the cattle? What is this that, that I hear? And Saul said, they. You notice that he puts it off on them. They have brought them from the Amalekites. These are, they, they, I'm not to blame. They're to blame. For, the, for they, the people, spared the best of the sheep and the oxen. Now, look at what he does. They did this. It's their fault. They're the ones that did it, but I have the glorified answer to sacrifice to the Lord your God. To sacrifice to the Lord your God. It's your God. You're the God who told me to do it. And the rest we have devoted to, to, to destruction. So you know what I've done? I saw that they did wrong. I saw that they were at fault, but you know what I'm going to do with that? We're going to sacrifice to the Lord. <clears throat> Look at me. I'm so awesome. I'm so awesome. And what he does is he literally injects himself twice. He lies to the man of God. Now, if you're going to lie to somebody, man alive, don't lie to the man of God. Don't lie to the one that is hearing from the Lord. Don't lie. Don't even attempt to lie. The Lord, He knows better. You know what? He lies. He injects himself with the ability to lie. Here's, you know, I'm going to make an injection before I see Saul coming. And he sees Saul coming. And this is what I inject him with. And that's not good enough. Somebody's got to take the blame. So he injects himself with passing the blame. It's they did this. You know, this is not, this is, this, you know, this is what I have always said. Don't tell me that the leader of the organization don't know what's going on in their, in their organization. I said that, Lord forgive me, but I said that to an overseer once. I was a little upset. And I said, you mean to tell me you don't know what's going on in your churches? And, and we didn't talk much after that. But, uh, <laughs> I've been kind of on the outside ever since. But, uh, but the thing is, you know, and don't tell me that, that the leader of an organization or, or the president of the United States, you know what? It's ultimately his responsibility. Don't pass blame. Take the, take the responsibility. You know, you can't say I didn't know what was, what was going on. I'm in charge. You know what? You're the king of the land. Don't start passing the buck on to somebody else and then try to blame it on them. We'll put all in to death if you want to, just as long as it's their fault, not mine. So he passes blame and he lies. So he's got injection after injection. He's got the little eyes. The little eyes are going on left and right. He's injecting over and over and over. See, the little eyes are the injections. See, if we look at the progression, now I'm, going to, I'm going to read these off and, and you, can, you can record those. They're not on the board. But if you look at the progression that Saul takes in injecting himself, 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 9, he injects himself with jealousy 
and rage over the fact that, that, that David is getting more attention than him. Yeah, he, is, he is jealous of David, so David gets more attention and he begins to start injecting himself with, with jealousy. When you inject yourself with jealousy, you inject yourself with rage, you know what? You've got a lethal combination going on inside you. In chapter 28, verse 5, there is an element of fear. Now we can see fear going on. He wouldn't be jealous if he wouldn't, if he didn't have an element of fear injected into his life. So He's afraid. Literally, the word says that he's afraid in, in, in verse in verse five of chapter twenty-eight. He is afraid, and we go on to verse seven in chapter twenty-eight. He is so far gone at this point. He's so far gone that he resorts to the very thing that he is banned from from society. No longer, when he became king. Uh, mediums and sorceries and those kinds of things are banned. You will be. Your, your life will be in danger. You are no longer allowed to do this by the degree of the king. Now God's not listening to him. God has shut him down. He is no longer, he's no longer has any kind of channel to the Lord. He is still the king and he is upset because he cannot give direction so he does the very thing that he has told everybody else not to do. Sir. So, you can see the progression. He's injected himself with everything until he gets to the point to where he goes and visits a witch immediately. Somebody to, 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 to summons up the spirit of Samuel who has passed away, to summons him up. And he is visiting, he's doing the very thing that is against the ways of the Lord. And he is doing it himself. So he's got to the point to where he is not in the gutter, he's kind of below the gutter. This is the king that, that has injected himself so much with so much that he's injected in so, so, so many attributes and so many, so many uh, 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 different ways of bringing himself uh, down that now he's got to the point to where he's doing something that he's told everybody else you can't do. Now we go on to verse chapter 31, verse 6. We find out that Saul dies. See, this is what's going to happen. If you watch people and you watch their lives and if you watch them ignore the Lord and ignore the invitation of the Lord, then you watch how their lives begin to start going down. Right. Now this is a progression. Psalm is an example. It ends up, he takes his own life, uh, own life on the battlefield and all of his sons are killed that day. Every, his entire family dies that day. Even the great, his great son Jonathan. Even the, the, the warrior Jonathan. The, 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 the good and righteous son dies in battle that day. See, Saul started off pretty good. Saul started off pretty good. Things were going pretty good for Saul. See, God gave him right out of the gate. Gave him a crown. Man, what more could you ask? You know, Saul was just 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 a, 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 a just a Benjamite man. He was just a a, a, a little, you know big tall fellow, but in a little small tribe. He was just a Benjamite. God gave him a crown. God gave him a throne. Set him and exalted him to a, a lofty place. Gave him a palace. Gave him an army. Gave him wonderful children, and everyone in the land looked up to him, revered him and esteemed him as king. And he injected himself so much. See, Saul chose the way of the eye. That's what Saul chose, the way of the eye. See, the little eye is what we inject ourselves with. The little eye is what we inject ourselves with. It's what's going in. It is the injection into our lives. See, the big eye, you know what that is? That's the me. See, that's the me. That's the my own way. That's the my own agenda. See, the big eye is my wants. The big eye is, is it's all about me. See, the big eye is I don't need anybody else. The big eye is the I and team. You know what? It's the one, it, it's the very thing that, that will drive everybody away from us. The big eye is fueled by the little eyes. See, and it all started with one little injection. It all started with one little injection. Now, I've watched folks. I've watched good folks in my life. I have watched folks do it to themselves and allow people to do it to them. 
Now I'm going to tell you something. It's not bad enough that you do it to yourself, but sometimes you allow people to do it to you. I have watched people, good people in my life that I have seen throughout my life, they have allowed someone to inject negativity into their life. They have allowed them to inject blame into their life and to inject a, 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 just a, a blatant evilness into their life until their whole life was consumed with bitterness and hate. You know what? That once love, fun-loving person, that one once person that everybody enjoyed being with, now nobody wants to be around them because they have such an, uh, an air of hatred and, and, and strife and envy and bitterness about them because of what has been injected into their lives. And I've watched this happen over and over and over. Now I'm going to give you something very important. And I want you to listen to this worship team if you'd be making your way here. This is very important. The little I, the little I is what feeds the big I. Now keep that in mind. Don't ever forget that. The little injections are what feeds the big I. The little I feeds the big I. See, but the thing is, here's the good thing that we can find out today. Here's the story. Here's the story that I want you to grab a hold of. You can also starve out the big I. See, if you're feeding something and you stop feeding it, then you will starve it out. You will starve that thing. If you, if you have a dog and you have him tied in the backyard, if you don't want him anymore, don't feed him and he will starve to death. The, the police will come and get you. And your neighbors will, 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 will look down on you forever. But the thing is, is if you don't want something, then you starve it out. If you want the big I to be uh, to go away, then you have to starve it out and you have to change the little eyes. So you have to change the injections. We have to change what is being injected into our lives. Look at Saul. All of those scriptures that we read about Saul. Saul all those things that we went over. All Saul would have had to have done at any point in time is done what David did and renew himself in the Lord. Encourage himself in the Lord. Visit on his face his time with the Lord. Re uh, renewing me a right spirit and creating me a clean heart, O Lord. But he didn't do that. He continued to get deeper and deeper into the injections. If we want to, if we want to start out the big eye, then the little eyes, we have to go from injection of pride to an injection of humbleness and humility. See, look at the difference. Going from an injection of pride to an injection of humbleness and humility. An injection of greed to an injection of giving. If we will go from an injection of jealousy to an injection of forgiveness. Then we would see things totally different. We would view people totally different. If we would take the injection of gossip and, and, and substitute that for an injection of prayer. You know what? There's nothing wrong with talking about people as long as you're talking to the Lord about it. You know what? I would be willing to say, if you will gossip to the Lord, then... You tell them, you tell them everything you don't like about somebody. And after a while, you keep on. I'm going to challenge you. You keep doing that. After a while, you're going to find out that there's a whole lot of you you're learning. There's a whole lot of me that I'm seeing. You know what? Maybe I don't need that person to change. Maybe I just need to change the way I see them. Maybe I need to go back to a little bit of humbleness and, and, and stop injecting some pride. But you know what? If we would change an injection of lies and blame to an injection of integrity. Yes, I did. If, we would, if we would change a, a, an injection of disobedience to an injection of relationship. Yeah. If we would change a, an injection of negative words to an injection of the word. If we would inject the word into our lives, then the negative words don't have any root. They don't have anything to take root to. But, but, Give the Lord a hand. I mean, He's good. Yeah. If we will inject deeper into our lives, then there's, you know what? It will, it will take up a big space in our lives. If we will inject not, if we will remove the not knowing injection of Christ, if we will take the injection of not knowing Christ and kick it to the curb and inject knowing Christ into our life, then you know what? We're going to have a different point of view of everything that we see. 
Every single thing. You know, we have to change the way of the eye. Because the way of the eye can take us one of two directions. It can take us where we don't want to go, or it can take us where God wants us to go. If we change the way of the eye, and if we change the little eyes, see, we will, we will begin to see the big eye disappear. The, the me disappear. The all about me disappear. And you know what? I promise you, you will enjoy life much more when it's not about yourself. So I want you to stand with me. I want to ask you to stand. Bow your heads and close your eyes with me this morning. I want to ask you to pray a prayer with me. I want that prayer to be a simple prayer of, of, of forgiveness, Lord. I want you to forgive me of my sins. I want you to come into my life. I want you to, 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 to forgive me of my sins, to enter into a, a relationship with me. That's, that's, that's ultimately why we're here. Lord, I don't want to make, continue to make these injections into my life. I don't want that to happen to me. You know what? I want to be different. I want people to notice a difference in me. So I want you to think about that. And I want you to pray and repeat after me. If you're in the house and you're visiting with us, we pray this prayer out loud. It's a prayer of, of forgiveness. It's saying, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Lord, I am no different than anybody else that has ever walked, ever lived, ever took a breath, ever had a heartbeat. I, am, I have been born into sin and that without the forgiveness of the Lord, the remission of sin, then I will not see heaven. So I want you to pray that prayer with me. And we're going to pray it out loud. Your church is going to help you. So I want you to know this is your opportunity to seek the Lord and to pray a sinner's prayer. Follow after me. Dear Lord, I come before you. I am simple and I have a simple request. Lord, I'm asking you to forgive me. Forgive me of my sins. I'm asking for renewal. I'm asking for redemption. And Lord, I thank you for entering into my heart. Beginning a relationship with me. In your name I pray. Amen. With your heads bowed and your eyes are closed, raise your hand if you prayed that prayer for the first time and let me know. Amen. Amen. Thank you. It's, there's two. Thank you. Amen. Amen. See, that's why we're here. Now, this is what I want to challenge you to do. We're going to open the altar. We're going to, we're going to be able to... You can bring whatever. J.D. was praying for someone a minute ago. See, sometimes we come to the altar and it's not always where we're praying for us. We're praying for somebody else. Bring whatever it is and come to the altar. But if you raise your hand, I don't want you to leave here until you have grabbed somebody. Now, if you're a woman and you raise your hand, I want you to grab one of our ladies and say, how can I, how can I walk with the Lord better than I? I mean, start this walk out and do it right. How can I do that today? If you're a man, grab one of our men and say, help me to walk this walk. Because you know what? This is a day of salvation, man. I'm excited to death. So I invite you, we open the altar. I invite you to come. We're going to sing just a little bit more. And I want you to, to know the altar is open. It is your altar. It is what God has given you and me. And as a place of victory. In the name of Jesus, sing with us.
is so good to us, God is awesome. I want you to keep in mind that uh, as you go through this week, that Bob will work himself to death at the fair. And uh, he's going to be riding right on the golf cart that we that, 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 that the church has given to him. He said something about it being mine. I'm like, it's as much yours as it is mine. <laughs> so do with it what you want. So uh, it's a blessing to be able. I went up to the the senior adult pageant. And, uh, and Mom says, in which I won. And, uh, and, and, and there goes Christ Point's cart taking people back and forth in the dreariness of the day. So Uh, 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 the studies keep keep everything on the back burner as far as uh, in your mind all, all the scheduling that we have Wednesday night we invite you back thank you Lord for your goodness and your blessings Lord thank you for loving us and watching over and guiding us and directing us Lord thank you for this wonderful good day Lord thank you for the folks that are at the altar praying Lord and seeking the Lord and we thank you for all that you do for us Lord we bless you and we praise you Lord thank you Lord that our house is filled Lord thank you that our hearts are filled thank you for this wonderful day Lord we exalt you we praise you we need you Lord move us forward in your name we pray amen you are just saying I love you all